Okay, we're gonna take a bet right now. I think it's gonna take four loads to move our entire home. Four carfuls, what do you think? You guys, moving is hard, emotionally, physically, mentally. My husband and I were talking the other day about how many times we've moved in our lives, and we realized that all together, we have moved a total of 44 times, making this move to our new house the 45th. But this was by far the easiest move, and so today I want to share our moving experience and some minimalist moving tips that helped make our move this time much lower stress. So give this video a like if you would like less stress and more rest in your life or moving experience, and please consider subscribing to my channel. We are a real minimalist family of four sharing easy ideas on how living minimally can help you be happier as a family. My first tip is to declutter your home as much as you can before you move. There's no sense in moving things that you don't want anymore. Last year we decluttered our entire lives down to eight suitcases so that we could move overseas to Germany, which is where we are now. And for me that was a very difficult process because I am absolutely an ex-hoarder. I lost my parents very early and for me everything was sentimental. And so I had to declutter literally decades of sentimental clutter which was a very, very difficult process, but also ultimately a very freeing process. My second tip is after you're done decluttering, have a plan on how you're going to discard those items that you decluttered. So you need to start early for this, especially if you're going to be selling items online, like on eBay or Poshmark. Sometimes things can take a while to sell. So you need to give yourself ample time and be able to take photographs of the item, list the item, sell the item. Even if you're trying to sell it on Facebook Marketplace, it can take some time. If you're interested in knowing how to figure out how to find out how much your stuff is worth and sell it online, I've got a great video about that, which I'll also link in the description below. And then besides selling online, there are always other options such as recycling or donating items that aren't in sellable condition or that you just don't have time to deal with. I will say that selling is always my favorite option to start with because it helps relieve some of the financial guilt that you often feel about getting rid of perfectly good items that you just don't want anymore. And also it helps you, I feel, recover some of the sentimental guilt. If you're very attached to something and you're selling it and someone is paying good money for it, you know that they're really going to value that item and appreciate it. Everyone that I sold to on eBay or in person on Facebook Marketplace was just absolutely so over the moon grateful to receive the item that I was selling for a great price. It's three days to move in and counting and we're headed over to meet my husband who had to go to the house early again today to receive a shipment from Ikea. So we are on our way to go check out our Ikea stuff. Another tip that I have for you is to prepare your new home as much as possible, but also be okay and accept that you're going to have to live in a transitional period. Too often shows show us an entire home renovation happening in 30 minutes to an hour, and that's just not how real life works. So get okay with there being a mess for a little while, fix things up as much as possible, but also don't get upset when you don't have the perfect place for an item right away. For example, we didn't have a kitchen, you know, and we were working right up until the last minute to get our kitchen in. I was washing my dishes in the bathroom sink for days, and that's just something that I had to accept because it's not something that could have been changed, and just enjoy the process and have fun with it. And know that there's going to be a period of time where things are not going to be perfect and be okay with that. And don't feel like you have to go out and buy things just to make it through that transitional period. 
speaking of our kitchen situation, our kitchen is now fully installed, so definitely subscribe to my channel if you want to see what kind of kitchen we ended up with. It took six people just to carry the granite countertop upstairs. I cannot wait to share it with you. When you're entering the final week of your move, try to eat everything in your house rather than buying any new food. And if you do have to buy new food rather than going to the grocery store, maybe just order some pizza or make a quick pasta and sauce so that you can eat everything as much as possible before you go. It is close to moving day and we've been trying to eat as much of our stuff as possible. And we have just got the most random things on our counter that we've been munching on. I made some cheesy pull-apart bread. Yumma. It's good, right? We are eating cheesy pull-apart bread and some salad and some random fruit and... Trust me, as someone who has handled two moves overseas, once to China and now to Germany, when I say that folding and packing things vertically, especially clothing, is the way to go. The clothing will take up so much less space, you'll be able to fit so much more, and then you can use way, way less boxes and luggages when you are moving. And that's gonna be a lot more efficient use of space and time. We've been holding on to our luggages for the move for a long time and I'm vacuuming them because they've been on the top of our wardrobe and look at how dusty these things are. My next tip is to make cleaning a habit. You're going to find when you're ready to move out that if things are already decently clean, it's a lot easier to clean up for your move. And you can go about tidying and cleaning a bit while you are making the move and it'll be a whole lot easier on you and your family. Squeaky clean. This is so hard. You have no idea how much I'm going to miss waking up and looking out the window and seeing this view. Both the boys and myself were experiencing a lot of feelings of sadness and loss when we knew that we were going to be moving out of our current rental because even though we knew we were going to our own beautiful house, we had been really, really happy at our furnished rental and we were definitely feeling like we were going to be sad and miss it a little bit. So we wanted to open up and discuss with each other these feelings that we were having. And if you're interested in seeing what that rental looked like, I did film a really, really quick tour before we moved out. I'm so last minute, guys. So if you want to see a tour of our old furnished minimalist rental, it was a one bedroom that we have been living in temporarily since we moved here. Comment down below, show me your apartment and I can put that together for you. Okay, we're gonna take a bet right now. I think it's gonna take four loads to move our entire home. Four carfuls, what do you think? Yeah, but uh, you know, you also need to tell people that you're only driving a small SUV, okay? Which... I think they can see that we're in a small yeah. SUV. And right now you have uh, you And know, we have two children in the, in the back. What? Say hi. Hi. Yeah, so I say four, so what do you say? Yeah, four is about right. Okay, let's see. Because we didn't have any furniture, we were able indeed to fit everything in four trunk loads, going back and forth between one house to the next. We did it all in four loads, and I think that that's pretty amazing. Even with the small German elevators, we were able to make it all work. And now that you're finally moved into your new space, it's time for you to unpack as much as you can and get to organizing. But also remember what I said before and don't stress out too much if you don't have the correct storage or you don't have the correct space. If everything isn't laid out perfectly in your new home, take your time to figure out what you need to complete your space and just clean up slowly as you go.